Hello and Mingla, welcome to MI Radio's Myanmar Today. I'm Henry Zin. Wazo robe offering occasion has arrived, but the robe market sees a sharp decrease. Yangon Region Transport Authority to provide more YBS buses as passengers travel more. A report on logistics business seeing a sharp decline. A story coverage on the CPC's achievements of people-centered development. All these reports coming up later on Myanmar Today, but for now, let's take a look at what's happening in local news. State Councillor Dong San Suu Kyi wrote on her Facebook page on Monday she hoped Myanmar would be able to push back the second COVID wave if effective measures could be taken to prevent the spread of the disease during the next one or two months. She wrote, quote, To prevent the spread of the COVID disease, we have to review the situation every two weeks and make a decision on whether to keep into effect certain rules, whether certain rules need to be relaxed or if some rules need to be strengthened. During this month, we have been able to relax the stay-at-home arrangements in all townships. The prohibition of mass gatherings of people is still in effect. She said if they can take effective measures to prevent the spread of the disease, she hopes we would be able to push back the second COVID wave during the next one or two months. She also said it is very important to wear masks in places like markets where there is close contact with others for long periods of time and don't forget to wash your hands frequently. The ASEAN Inter-Parliamentary Assembly, IPA, held the third annual meeting of its Advisory Council on Dangerous Drugs, the third IPA court meeting through video conference on Monday. Myanmar parliamentary representatives led by Bidong Zuluto, IPA Joint Committee Chairman Uzo Thein, joined the meeting where First Vice President of the National Assembly of Vietnam, Madam Tong Thi Pong, and Secretary General the, of the IPA, Ms. Nguyen Thuan Van, delivered opening remarks. The representatives of United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime and the ASEAN senior officials on drug matters also discussed narcotic control measures during COVID-19 pandemic and impacts, progress and challenges of the region in this issue, and cross-border drug trafficking and abuses. The meeting also approved the draft document of turning words into actions towards a drug-free ASEAN community, which suggests building capacity and technical assistance for effective handling illegal drug problems locally, internationally and globally amid COVID-19. Detailed measures in this issue, cooperation in fighting against cross-border actions, collaboration in sharing knowledge and enhancement of cooperation in the region and with other countries. Money exchanges said the U.S. dollar has been sliding against the jet in the local currency market, with the exchange rate touching a low of 1,386 jets per dollar on Monday. The Central Bank of Myanmar purchased over $30 million from private banks in June to govern the market. A market observer pointed out the CBM's effort seems to keep the exchange rate at above 1,400 juts when US dollar dip in the global market. The domestic forex market witnessed the maximum rate of 1,410 juts this month. Despite the CBM's dollar purchase, the dollar is currently packed at below 1,400 juts in the domestic market. At present, the global forex market sees the weak sentiment amid the coronavirus outbreak with the US dollar index of around 97. Chairman of Yangon Gold Entrepreneurs Association, Umyo Mien, said the global gold has crossed over US$1,000 per ounce since 2019 and registered a decade high of over $1,770 per ounce. Following the global hikes, the domestic gold price should have raised up to above 1.3 million jets per tickle. Yet, pure gold currently fetches about 1.219 million jets per tickle. He said, despite the upticks in the global gold market, the domestic market cannot raise the price as the foreign demand halted, coupled with jet gaining against the US dollar. Meanwhile, the global gold price currently crosses 1,772 US dollars per ounce. A dollar exchange rate stands at around 1,387 juts as per market data. Circular Road of Cape Bayinau in Kothaun Townships is under renovation with railings and new pavement. 
The Gotham Township Development Committee has completed 90% of the project as a move to beautify the town bordering with Thailand and having the bronze statue of ancient Myanmar king, Bayinau. The southernmost town of Myanmar has become a boom area for tourism business due to nearby islands in the Andaman Sea, and its circular road is a recreation site for both locals and visitors. The 1,885 feet circular road is being upgraded with railings and 3 to 9 feet pavement along the route as other renovation works are carried out with the 2019 to 2020 financial year budget of the Deninai region government and 144.85 million chats of general revenue fund. That's all with the local news. Let's take a look at the first report now. Myanmar people preserve a tradition of offering wazo robes to members of Sangha in agreement with their belief of religion in Myanmar, a country allowing all citizens to believe in the religion that they like in an independent manner during the rainy season from July to September. The sales in monks, robes and religious items were worth hundreds of thousands of jets in the market due to donation events. However, in 2020, the current outbreak of COVID-19 has become an obstacle to mass gatherings and events as well as festivities to hold donation ceremonies. These reasons have brought about a sharp decrease in the market of selling religious items, including monks' robes. Zueman will tell us more. Myanmar people preserve a tradition of offering wazo robes to members of Sangha in agreement with their belief of religion in Myanmar, a country allowing all citizens to believe in the religion that they like in an independent manner during the rainy season from July to September. The sales in monks robes and religious items were worth hundreds of legs of jets in the market due to donation events. But in 2020, the current outbreak of COVID-19 has become an obstacle to mass gatherings and events as well as festivities to hold donation ceremonies. There are restrictions on celebration of donation and pagodas are also closed. These reasons have brought about a sharp decrease in the market selling religious items, including manx robes. Ujay Aunai, head of Office of Shredagong Pagodas, Board of Trustees, said. As a religious belief, Myanmar people usually bring robes when they come to the pagodas and the monasteries and they are donated. A variety of religious items are also donated to members of Sangha. During the period of the closure of the pagoda, the staff of pagodas board of trustees offering meals, water and flowers to Buddha images at the pagoda under the arrangement of the pagoda's board of trustees. According to the traditions, dawn meal and day meal as well as fruits are offered at the pagoda. Moreover, flowers, water and candle are offered at four Ayongan gateways and 12 satellite posts of the pagoda. Previously, there were donors for the pagoda every day. During the closure of the pagoda, the staffs have to perform the tasks of offering dawn meals, day meals, flowers, water, light and fruits at the pagoda. Myanmar people go to the pagodas and monasteries bringing offertories, including ropes, while keeping Sabbath there. Ceremonies of offering ropes to members of Sangha are held every year. For these reasons, the demand for ropes is very high. At such a time, purchase from countryside is a great deal. Tolwe Aung, junior manager of Sotika Manx Rope Shop from Myanmar Big Shop Center, said. Now we have a few purchases. During the previous days, the customers were very rare because of the impact of COVID-19. This time previously was the burst in our sales. The COVID-19 brought the sale force to go down. We can't say when our business recovers. This time previously, we earned 20 to 30 million chats a day. Now we have received 10,000 to 3,000 chats a day, and the difference is a big gap. I suppose that our sales force will be back to a right track only after the virus disappears. <laughs> In the current manx rope market, the prices for one set of rope range from 12,000 to 40,000 jets. Some kinds of ropes are worth 150,000 jets. The buyers prefer to buy ropes sued with the cloth coming from Japan. Dr. Wai, owner of Jomi Manx Rope Shop, said. 
<laughs> I haven't called back the workers yet. I'm suing the rule by myself. All the workers ran me up to return to me. I don't tell them to come back because I can't tell when the market recovers. Our business is good when the full moon day or wasu get near. I wish all the people not only from our country but also from the world will make good head and all the situation will return to normal. The price of one set or route made with Chinese C1C costs 10,000 or 11,000 jet. The price of one set or route made with triple three or Singapore costs 16,000 or 17,000 jet. The price of one set or time route costs 25,000 to 35,000 jet. The route market was not good this year because there were no one who wanted to enter the manhood. <laughs> The rope shops earned 1.52 to million jets this time. Last year, large shops earned more than 10 million a day. But now, some shops do not earn even about 100,000 a day. The rope market has been good starting February to the end of the summer holidays every year. Also in the rainy season, the sale force of the ropes is favorable as Wazo rope offering ceremonies are held. Katina rope offering ceremonies come after the rainy season. For that reason, it can be said that the rope sales is good throughout the year. But this year, the rope market is affected by the COVID-19. That's a report on Wazo rope offering and the rope market seeing a sharp decrease. We'll move on to the next report. A source from the Yangon Region Transport Authority said YRTA has been making preparations to provide more YBS buses as passengers travel more. Before COVID-19, the YRTA provided public transport service with the use of 4,400 to 4,500 buses a day. The public transport service by the YRTA accounted for 33% in April, 60% in May, and 88% in June. The number of passengers taking YBS buses made an average of 1.8 million as a total, accounting for 19% in April, 33% in May, 37% in June, and more than 40% at the end of June. For more details, we turn to Zueman and Yenai. Yango Region Transport Authority, YRTA, has been in the preparation for providing more YBS buses as passengers travel more, said a source from the YRTA. Before COVID-19, the YRTA provided public transport service with the use of 4,400 to 4,500 buses a day. The public transport service by YRTA accounted for 33% in April, 60% in May, and 88% in June. The number of passengers taking YBA buses made an average of 1.8 million as a total, accounting for 19% in April, 33% in May, 37% in June, and more than 40% at the end of June. The current public transport service hasn't returned to normal, but the YRTA is in the preparation for providing public transport service using more YBS buses because it is hoped that the passengers will be more and the schools will be reopened in July, Ula Antrant, Secretary of YRTA, said. We, the YRDA, have to prepare for the providing public transport service according to the situation of the travel of the passengers. In this state, we are trying to be able to provide transport service until the situation returns to normality. But anti-COVID-19 restrictions we will have to follow are still in effect. Our situation depends on the travels of the passengers. It is not easy to tell now when the normal situation comes. Therefore, let me say the YRTA is now providing the traveling people with smooth and secure transport service. The YRTA has seen a decline in its income and every bus line has a little difficulty. But we are taking up this responsibility. We have to remedy the worries of YBS drivers and distribute max and hand gels. If the bus lines can't afford the cost, we will have to attend to their requirement. We are carrying out preventive measures against the virus. We have to take into consideration of social distancing guidance. We are facing limitations, although we would like to fulfill the requirement of the people. 
The current number of passengers taking YBS account to 800,000 a day, and some bus lines and less income and it can't over the running cost. The bus lines are currently carrying out sanitation and disinfection because COVID-19 can't be completely controlled. UNI, in charge driver of YMBS, Parami Transport Service of Bandula Transport Company Limited, said. We have seven bus lines and eight roads, providing transport service with the use of 314 buses. We close our bus line from 13 to 16 of April during the Indian holidays. 1,532 buses run during the remaining days in April. The use of the number of buses accounted for 21%, and the number of passengers were more than 200,000, accounting for 12%. In May, 2,539 buses run, accounting for 26%. There were more than 400,000 passengers that accounted for 15%. Up to 23rd of June, 4,743 buses run, and the use of the number of buses accounted for 65 0.67%. There were more than 1 million passengers that accounted for 47.52%. The buses are crowded in the rush hours. In other hours, the passengers taking the buses are very fewer. At this time, the passengers need to be careful about their close contact with one another in the bus. They also need to wear masks and the YRTA should send more buses during the rush hours. It is important that all the passengers must follow the instructions as to the preventive measures against the virus. Mami Mito, a company staff from the Lad Township, said. Everyone should wear a mask in this time. When I go out, I wear a mask and use hand gel. When I start to wear the mask, I feel trouble breathing and later it will be okay. I would like to tell that those feeling the world mess should be fine and those feeling the wash hands should also be fine. Earlier, it was difficult for me to go and now I'm used to this current situation. The restrictions with regard to COVID-19 will be released slowly by slowly and the schools will be reopened during July. For these reasons, the YRTA is in the preparation for providing more transport service to the passengers using more YBS buses. That's a report on Yangon Region Transport Authority to provide more YBS buses as passengers travel more. More reports coming up later. Stay with us. Container trucking is one of the most important sectors in Myanmar since its sector. It's transporting goods and products all over Myanmar, which is imported to Myanmar, and it also transports the goods and products which are to be exported. But the outbreak of COVID-19 has brought a sharp decline in this sector, according to the report by Myanmar Container Trucking Association. Willinson has more. Logistics sector is one of the most important areas of economic growth of a nation, and most of the logistics in domestic market in Myanmar are transported by the containers. Therefore, container trucking is the essential part of the holistic growth of the nation. So far, the container is the most effective means for transporting goods across the country. As Yangon is a commercial city in Myanmar, it has emerging business market of container in Yangon. Yangon port and Diloa port are the two most important ports so far. However, with the outbreak of COVID-19, this container and truck sector sees a sharp decline. During this period, according to the report by Wu Ang Mo, the chairman of Myanmar Container Trucking Association, speaking to MI Radio, Wu Ang Mo said, There is a huge difference before and after the outbreak of COVID-19. Before COVID-19, we usually transported more than 100,000 containers across Myanmar but it has now gone down to one-third of the total number and it has a higher possibility of declining further in the coming months because the orders placed before COVID-19 arrived in the middle of April and till last month we were still unloading the goods. We will see the decline of the business and it will not recover soon for sure. But on the other hand, the decline of the business during monsoon season is not the unusual case. 
for the container trucking business. And rainy season is the time when this business see downflow of the goods. Speaking on what are the goods which are transported the most by this container, Wu Angmu also said. Some of the most exported goods are bean, maize, and rice, along with vegetables, including fruits. For the import, it includes food for animals, other household products, construction materials, and other chemical products for the factory use. According to Wu Angmu, up to the restriction put forward by the government not to go out at night, the container trucking work became quite easier and faster inside Yangon as a traffic jam was reduced at night. The issue this container trucking business facing is, there are some container drivers who are driving the container with expired driving license and in response to this remark, Uamo said, the reason for some of the drivers who drive improperly is they are truck drivers who have expired driving license but as the license office were closed for months they were not able to renew their license but the container trucking association is hoping to deal with this issue very soon Ute Myowen is one of the business persons who runs a container trucking business and he also spoke to my radio and said <laughs> As we transport the imported goods and products to the local market across Myanmar, we also transport the local goods and products to some of the main books in Yangon for export. We also have border gate exporting such as Mose and Yaori. So we use container trucking for this border pass business as well. Every place has their own specific needs. For example, Kachin State has demand of machine related products other places have demand of iron and metal. Some places are in need of agricultural implements. For a variety of consumers, demand all over Myanmar. Container trucking is the main distributor in the sector. The impact of COVID-19 is affecting both transporting the goods and exporting the goods. And it is an unexpected challenge of COVID-19 facing. Therefore, Myanmar Container Trucking Association said the association must be prepared for any other challenges in the coming years, how to look after one another, maintaining the business without going panic. This is Williamson for MI Radio. One last report coming up on Myanmar today. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 1st of July 2020 is the 99th anniversary of the founding of the Communist Party of China. Out of its success during the 99 years, it showed great achievements of people-centered development, including poverty alleviation and combating COVID-19, which brought about challenges to the health crisis of the people. Am I ready reached Zaji Nguyen from CRI Myanmar Department of China Media Group for more information on that, and we turn to Thoras Wezin for details. The Communist Party of China marks its 99th anniversary of the CPC founding on the 1st of July of 2020. Under the leadership of Chinese President Mr. Xi Jinping, who is also the General Secretary of the CPC Central Committee, as one of the key strengths of China's system of governance, it has set the vision of making people-centered development and continuously quarantining and improving people's livelihood and well-being to achieve common prosperity for everyone. And my radio reached to Masaji Nguyen from CRI Myanmar Department of China Media Group. And she talked about some of the achievements of the CPC during 99 years of founding. ဒီကမ္မနေပါတီဒီတောက်မဲ့ထိန်းမှန်နေဖြစ်ပါတယ်။ဒီကမ္မနေပါတီကိုးစက်ကိုးနေတာအတွင်းအောင်မြင်မှ
Poverty elevation is identified as a critical prospect for China to reach the goal in building of a moderately prosperous society in all respects by 2020, as it is expected to mark the first 100th anniversary of CPC in 2021. About 93 million people were lived out of poverty by the end of 2019, representing 97% of the total poverty population. And it will accomplish the absolute poverty alleviation work by 2020 as planned. The ပြည်သူတွေရဲ့စားဝင်းနေရေးအာမခံပြင်နိုင်မှုတွေနောက်ပညာရေးတွေတက်ကြီးရွယ်ကိုဆောင်ရှောက်ရေးတွေကျန်
offshore duty-free shops on China's island province of Hainan raked in 13.61 billion yuan in sales in 2019, up 35% year-on-year, local authorities said Wednesday. Data from the provincial Department of Finance showed that Hainan's duty-free shops recorded about 3.84 million purchases, up 34% year-on-year. The data showed the sales also boomed on New Year's Day on the island, with 70,100 items worth 54 million yuan sold, up 35.91% and 19.69% compared with the same day last year. Hainan also opened two new offshore duty-free shops in Haikou and Cheonghai in 2019, adding to the previous two in Haikou and Sanya. Police in Detroit drove through a group of protesters and some people were seen climbing on the hood of the police SUV before it drove through the group. Police say the officer was trying to escape after being surrounded. Take a look at this video. Well, that's all we have for now. Thanks for joining me on Myanmar today. I'm Henry Zin. Stay safe and stay protected, everyone. I'll see you again. Goodbye.